Okay, everybody loves to see my little cotto tree. Probably the most, one of my most, I don't know, I don't really look at the numbers very much, but I'm pretty sure this is probably my highest grossing per view video or however you want to say that on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure, really. I think it is. Anyway, everybody loves, here's my little cotto tree. Everyone loves seeing it. What time of year is it? It is uh, February 6th right now. And uh, here is the crop that will be ready for about May. See, it's really bright green and uh, not ready yet. And then it's the time of year where the buds, 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 buds are coming out right here, right? So uh, what's the trick? They're not actually open yet, not one flower. Well, actually there's one in there that's just starting to open. I don't know, can you see that? It's right in the bright sunshine right there. Anyway, so yeah, they're start, everything's starting to bud out. It's a time of year. This is what happens uh, a little sooner in Southern California than, than Northern California. But that's not the whole point of the video. What do you need when the flower is open? Come on, everybody, answer me. What do you need? You need bees, Gary. You need bees. You need bees to pollinate. Because you know about the birds and the bees, right? What would life be without the birds and the bees? There would be no life. Correct. How do you get the birds and the bees to come out uh, well, you can have a beehive, but I haven't really got into that yet. Um, any other ways? Someone actually, someone just told me you can take like honey and mix it with water and spray your tree down. And then the bees will sense the sugar and go pollinate your bees. So I'm going to try that. I need to make a new video. But um, so besides like spraying your trees down with honey, I'm thinking like sunny delight. You ever open Sunny Delight at a picnic? Actually, Sunny Delight's really terrible stuff. But when I used to drink it as a little stupid kid that didn't know any better, the bees would just come always and just like try to get in your Sunny Delight. So I'm thinking you could mix up some Sunny Delight and spray your trees and then attract the bees, right? But here's another way you could attract your bees. Look, this plant love, these bees love this plant. Look, it's actually a fairly cold day, right? Can you see the bee? Yeah, you can see the bee. Um, Anyway, it's a really cold day, and I know that like 79% of you, at a minimum, know what this plant is. This is Rosemarinus officialis, rosemary from the Mediterranean, and uh, I planted it on this slope for several reasons. One, because if you don't plant anything, you'll have erosion, as you have, you know, along here. But look what happens. Look, I guarantee you, this thing's rooting. They spread out. And they root, look at that, those are roots. So you actually take a little cutting of that, put it in the ground and get it to go. But it'll lock up all of this soil in place so you won't have erosion and you won't have uh, you know dirt in your water going down to the creek and clogging up the fish and, and basically making the salmon extinct because they don't like mud in their water. They want gravel to spawn on. I can totally understand that. Um, I wouldn't want mud either. Uh, well, maybe mud could be kind of fun to spawn on, but uh, nice fine gravel. That's probably the way to go if you're a fish. But anyway, um, look at how steep the slope is. And yet it just completely covers it. And guess what? Guess how much I water this slope? Guess how much I water? Zero. Zero. Wait, one more time. Zero. Okay. Not going to make you sick anymore. Now you can see I have all my citrus up top. This is my experimental grove. 36 different kind of trees when I first moved here. And uh, now I, you know, I haven't really, well, truthfully, I've never fertilized them. <laughs> this is terrible. But uh, that was like about uh, 18 years ago. But um, I really need to fertilize them and take better care. But I don't water the rosemary at all. I think I watered it a little bit a few times this summer to get it going. And then after that, none. But this rosemary will attract, as you can see, bees, even on cold days, to get them in your garden to get them to go visit your avocado trees or anything else that needs it. Now this is the low growing uh, prostrate uh, form of, of uh, rosemary. Now along the driveway on the other side, I wanted the upright growing variety. This is called Tus, uh, Tuscan Blue. And what's interesting actually is the fact that it's not really blooming yet, just a little bit. Tuscan blue is a darker blue color. And uh, here again, I planted it and I think in fall, 
and uh, then didn't do well. I watered it a couple times, and that was it. And then uh, now you see it's this wonderful hedge all along. And here's the other thing about rosemary watch, watch this, watch, see this? Look, this is what you do, all right? Take it off, and you eat it. Not. <laughs> That's actually a raw rosemary. What I like to do, pick the rosemary, chop it up in little fine pieces, and cook with it, do whatever you want. My favorite thing of all is put it on a plate, olive oil, vinegar, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, and uh, really good crunchy French bread. Sourdough French bread. Lop it all up. It's so good. You got to try it. So anyway, there's your upright rosemary, and here's your prostrate rosemary. And something I'm noticing right over here is uh, this is a variety that's a darker blue. It stands up a little bit. It's not as prostrate as the regular kind, but it has a darker blue flower. It's called Irene. And um, a friend of mine out here uh, uh, created this plant or found it or something. And they, he named it after his wife, Irene. So uh, there you go. Take a look at that story. But that's how you get the bees in your garden. So you can get some guacamole going. And that's all for now. Yeah.